ladies and gentlemen, good morning. John Gray here. This is the John Ollie Fifth Quarter Show, and we are celebrating after a 2012 win over the Golden Eagles of Shelbyville. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How you feel about that? Uh, a lot better than I would if I had a loss. <laughs> uh, I'm proud of our young men. Told them that last night, that if you'd have told me... Uh, the day after we had gotten beat by McGavick like we did in the first ball game of the year, uh, that this team was on a secure second place in the eighth ball game of the year in our district. Uh, I would have probably taken that really happily, but I would not have believed you that it was going to happen. And uh, This team's come a long ways. Uh, they have fought through a lot of adversity. Sometimes it's our own fault. We shoot our own selves in the foot sometimes. But, um, you know, every team has adversity, and Shelbyville's having an adversity as well. They've lost, uh, I think, a total of five players to season-ending mm-hmm. injuries, and they lose Morton last night on the last play of the first half. Uh, and so, anyway, um, you know, it's just part of the game. Part of the game. And... You hope that you got somebody that will step up and take advantage of the opportunity. Um, sometimes you do and sometimes yeah, you don't. Yeah. And, uh, but this team, you know, we fought, we we battled through it. But the biggest thing this team's learned to do is, is to battle. Mm-hmm. That when you get your nose bloodied, um, to use a fight term, there, you don't just keep taking it. You 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 fight back. You fight back. And, yeah. And, and we didn't do that at the first of the year in the scrimmages, preseason scrimmages, and that first ball game, we'd take a shot from the other team and we just keep taking it. And now uh, our kids, as hard headed as we are, sometimes. They will fight. They will battle. They will, the and they have done that. I mean, and it's like I said earlier. I mean, the de- defense, defense, defense. As yeah. as you watch this film, folks, you'll see the 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 number of times that they had their back to the wall, fourth and one, fourth and six inches, you know, fourth and two. Uh, all areas of the field, not just in the middle of the field, on the goal line. I mean, and stood up and absolutely won those battles. It was just incredible. It was very, very exciting to watch. Um, you probably know this statistic, but you've beat, we've beat all of our all of our rivals this year. Our local home day, you know, we beat Fayetteville, Franklin County, Coffee County, and now Shelbyville. And that's that great. that's that's a you know that makes for a good season uh, <laughs> in Tullahoma. It makes life no a matter lot, what else. It makes happens. life a lot easier for our young men when they, especially when the seniors go off to college next year. Mm-hmm. And they'll be up at MTSU or UTC or UTK or wherever yeah. they're going. Uh, there'll be people from these schools right. that'll be there, and um, and it's it's just nice to know that. They're not going to sit there and tell you about <laughs> how they whipped you or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's good. Uh, that's good. Hopefully, ours don't sit around and tell them how we whipped them. But that, it just that brings that, that sometimes it. brings on another whip. Kind of whip. I, I could. <laughs> but we're we're mighty proud to be here uh, after a win on a on an away with an away game over in Shelbyville, and uh, the the young men, as you'll see. Played incredible, uh, very interesting ball game. Uh, as uh, you know, it's it, we're seven to nothing at halftime. Yeah, uh, and I've so to some a, of the uh, administrative people there, the former football coaches, the AD Whit Taylor, and talked with Whit some, and talked to some others, and I can't remember. I don't want to misquote Whit. So, but anyway, the first half they said was one of the best half of footballs that that their team had played. And uh, and I, I just thought it was probably a really good football game to be watching. Yeah, yeah it was. And, it was. And and we'll get to it here in just a minute, folks. It was great in the stands. It'll be great for you right now. We'll be back with the first quarter of play after these messages.
Ascend Federal Credit Union, raising possibilities. Since 1917, Builder Supply has been the place to go for all your building materials. It's where the contractors have shopped for years. Builder Supply stocks quality Benjamin Moore paint, Tamco shingles, case knives, DeWalt, Stanley, and Makita tools, Peachtree Southern Rose and Sun Windows, Traders, Grills, Quick Set Locks, General Shale Brick, Yellow Wood, and Pass Load Nail Guns and Nails. Experienced salespeople are there to help you find the right products for your job. So when you're ready to build, whether large or small, think Builder Supply. 301 South Atlantic Street in Tallahoma. It's football time in Tennessee. Keith Barnett here with the Russell Barnett Automotive family where we're ready for another great season. The name you've trusted for over 30 years and home of the million mile warranty. Stop by one of our four locations and catch that next great deal. Russell Barnett Chrysler Dodge Jeep, Chevrolet GMC, Ford and Mercury in Winchester, and Russell Barnett Kia in Tullahoma. My question is, why buy anywhere else? change in two years, but not everything has to. With the Charter Price Guarantee, lock in low rates for two years, because sometimes it's nice to know what's on the road ahead. Our captains last night, number 25, Brandon Koch, uh, number 40, Dalton Cox, number 87, Caleb Olive, and number nine, Justin Brown. Um, we wanted the ball first last night as the field was in great shape, but it was really wet and I wasn't sure how long well it would stay would. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought it held up well all the way through the game. They have really improved their field over the years. But it was, as, as I walked on the field after the ball game, I mean, it was mushy soft. Yeah. And it, and it held up as far as big chunks. You know, I was thinking there's big chunks of this going to be laying everywhere. Right. It you know, held up Thursday better. night game earlier this year, I think, at BGA, where the students had to go out there at halftime out of the stands and <laughs> start putting <laughs> chunks putting back, back in. Putting my back in. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted the football, and we ended up being able to take it, even though Shelbyville won the coin toss. They deferred to the second half. And uh, they're not on kick it deep to Trey Birch. Marcella Scott picks it up and not able to return it for much. But we've got the ball in decent field position. And um, Shelbyville surprised us a little bit. They came out playing a little bit different style of defense than, uh, you know, what we had first expected. We thought in two backs they'd play us just a little bit differently than they did. And uh, Justin had an automatic check off there and he checks off and not everybody's on the same page. And uh, we are trying to roll out and throw deep, but Shelbyville's got good coverage. I thought Justin made pretty, pretty good decisions last night. I, he, I thought he played, played well. And um, we'll come back right here and try to run Trey behind Kelton Hickerson there leading him. And we were able to get nine yards, but couldn't get that last yard to get a first down. So we'll punt the ball away with Trevor Denny snapping to Cody Morton. And they got two speed demons back there, and so we were really trying to punt it away from them, and Cody didn't quite hit that one as well as we'd have liked. <coughs> this is Morton on the speed sweep, or excuse me, on the toss sweep. Stopped by a host of Wildcats. As they're gonna get a good little drive right here to start the game. 
It's going to be the first of those fourth down stops that you talked about. Castleman there on the run, and Trey Burks makes the tackle. Yeah, I couldn't believe that they didn't give that boy the ball any more than they did because he's a load. He is a load. Uh, they try to run an isolation play there, and Joe London and Cody Morton, Jacob Pearson, uh, for virtually no gain. Here comes the trap again, and that was probably the one play that they hurt us with more than any other. Zane Price makes the tackle, but not until they picked up a first down. And they're going no huddle. And so anyway, they do that a lot, and therefore you have to listen to you and I a little mm -hmm. bit more because Bob, the Moyer, has to start the video while they're at the line. You never know when they are going to snap it. They're still picking up big chunks of yardage, but big play coming up right here. And that's a great job. Aaron Gray and Jacob Pearson there. Dalton Cox. This time, if I remember right, they handed off 24 right up the gut. And he's met by Jacob Pearson. Yeah. And then a host of Wildcats. Great play. Pulling backwards. So now it sets up fourth down. And they're going to try to sweep it toward the camera here. If I remember, I could be wrong. My brain doesn't work as well as it once did. But they're going to sweep to the outside here. And Aaron Gray, along with um, Josh Duncan, make the stop. He's a yard short of the first down. Great job by the defense. Come back, and we're trying to run an isolation, and Trey cuts it all the way back against the grains. They would pick up, pick up three or four. You know, this time of year, there's just about everybody's got kids playing both ways. A lot of kids playing both ways. Right. Unless you're just at a program that's just loaded with football players. Yeah, yeah. Not. because, you know, they, they have people hurt. We have people hurt. <clears throat> like you said, you've got two your, your two people that were playing quarterback two months ago were playing defensive tackle. Right, and they're playing <laughs> well for us. Um, We're going to fumble the handoff this time, and Trey picks it up and is able to get the one yard we needed. So we at least get the first down. And <clears throat> that people, helped old Mo right there. People that watched us all year long, they know that we constantly preach get two first downs. Right. That's the minimum that we want is two first downs, and we got the first of the two right then uh, because that's how you win field position. Anything beyond two first downs is, is just icing on the cake for us. Justin does. Good job scrambling, but uh, still can't find anybody open. Tries to hit Zane Price. And blitz is on. He does a great job of avoiding a blitz. Gets the ball to Zane this time, and now we've picked up the second first down on this drive. Zane has a great knack for yards after catch. He does. He knows he which direction gets to run downfield. Trey Burks on the carry, on the sweep there, and he's able to pick up about five or six. He was just back inside a little bit, Coach. And here we're trying to throw a bootleg, and we get Dalton Cox there in the flats, and that's a great play by he was. their player. Because uh, I thought we had the first down, and lo and behold, he flies out of nowhere and makes a great stop. And then um, they jam us up pretty good. Good play by their defense. and. Uh, we're trying to draw them off, but they show discipline and don't move. And to be honest with you, uh, we're trying to draw them off again, but um, somebody forgot to tell our center. 
<laughs> and so I'm just telling you, this is just a play made by Justin Brown and, and Zane Price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought, and that's all you can say. I thought we'd put the Tebow in there for a minute, the, the Tebow jump pass. Good fake there by Justin, but we don't have anybody open. He ends up having to throw it away. But that was real good by he and Trey on the fake that they made. We had what we wanted. We just couldn't get anybody open. Trey bounces here and... Excuse me, able to pick up about three or four yards, but the ball came out, and uh, so Shelbyville's going to take over. He was on the ground when he came out, wasn't he? Uh, he was going down. Was going down? Yeah. It's hard to right see. Right there in front of us. And, now, that's... and then they snapped the ball there, obviously, when they weren't ready for it to be snapped. Here's that trap. This time we catch it from behind. Yeah. Great job, Joe. Joseph London, who had another really quality game again. Yes, he did. Uh, yes, he did. He's, he's two really quality games back he's, to back. He's been playing very, very well. Our whole defense, those, those young guys, I mean, it's, like I said, you've got two quarterback-type individuals playing in the defensive line. Yeah, but that's because they got motors. They got you motors, know, they and got people motors are hurt. want to play, yeah. and... And, you know, Matt Carter um, got moved against Franklin County when we were preparing for Franklin County. Uh, Coach Britton made that move, thought it would work. I'll be honest with you. I told him I didn't think it would, and Coach Britton was right. He did. And, he uh, made some incredible plays last night. reason you surround ball. yourself with coaches better than yourself. <laughs> uh, That's always helpful, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It adds to longevity. Yeah. Well, but, uh, uh, you know, this, this word, what, nothing, nothing, nothing right here. Zero, zero. Uh, we have moved the ball down to their end of the field. They have had the too. turnover. They've been deep in our territory, and our defense has held. Um, you know, we, th we really thought this would be a, a seven, eight-point ball game. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't expect it to turn out like it did. And, and the score is really deceiving. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot closer ball game than what it turned it out. It was. Score it was because with four minutes left and five minutes left in the game toward the end, you'll be going, we still don't have enough points on the board. Right. You know, we're at 14-0 there. 0 with Knowing that all they got to do is one of their athletes get a big play and they're right back in the ball Right game. there. Right there. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to go uh, to a commercial break and we'll be back with the second quarter of 2012 Golden Eagles. Eagles and Wildcats. Yeah. Mark, Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay them a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Clayton's has been Tullahoma's family shoe store for over 100 years with a reputation for fashion and personal service. And the tradition continues today. Stop by Clayton's and see our large selection of fine shoes. Unlike all the rest, Southern Community Bank will provide you with a different banking experience because you are our first priority. Our services are intuitive. Our team is friendly. Our approach is refreshing. Our support to the community is unwavering. And our service is clearly unique. We offer accounts that make banking simple and hassle-free with all the conveniences you want and need most. Call Southern Community Bank and experience the bank that is unlike all the rest. I'm Judd Matheny, approving this message as your Tennessee State Representative for the 47th District. When some of you think of me as State Representative, you picture me in a coat and tie at the historic and beautiful State Capitol. Nashville's a scenic city. From the Parthenon to the Ryman, it's easy to lose focus. I want you to know that when I serve there, all I can think about 
is improving your quality of life and protecting your rights here. Nashville's beautiful, but it has nothing on the citizens of the 47th District. Shelbyville opens up with the ball. They make a play fake and try to run a screen right here to Morton. And pretty good job by Wildcat defense. And again, Morton's also the punter. He is the punter, which I'm always glad to see him punt the football, <laughs> you know, instead of him pull it down. Yeah, because there was a couple of times last night I thought, hmm. I mean, he sprayed you all across the field. It's not a real easy thing here. Try to run Trey there, and he picks up about three. Um, and here, um, we got to run and play on, but Justin's going to pull it and throw it. And, and you no, know, I'll take blame for that. We hadn't done that much from that pistol set. We throw our own little screen here, and Trey turns it up north and south there, and we're able to get the first down. And so that was big. That was a big third yeah. down conversion there. Come back, we're going to run a quick screen here to Cole Potter. And just could, you know, we got the blockers over there, but we didn't really get anybody in any white shirts on the blue shirts. Yeah. If we had, we might have popped that one. But anyway, we pick up four or so. Come back, we're going to hit Zane Price here. Um, and Zane, he knows how to go north and hey, south, as we said earlier. He does what he does, and it's, he's good at it. Uh, that's one of the things I'm really proud on our receivers on. Uh, early this year, we hounded them about running north and south after making the catch right. instead of east and west. And they've done a whole lot better at catching the ball and heading north and south. Come back and... Get that one in there between two defenders, and Zane Price steps underneath that safety there, and uh, we're able to get a touchdown. I didn't realize how close that was. Uh, I, I thought that the linebacker was going to get it when I saw mm -hmm. him moving there. We didn't do a very good job of selling that that was a run. That's not, it wasn't the backfield. It was our offensive line that didn't do a good job on that particular play because he didn't honor the run at all. And, uh, and as I watch the videotape, I can see why, because we just didn't see the run yeah. well enough on that side of the ball. And, you know, most people wouldn't think about that, 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 that your line, the line involvement is there in selling a play as well because yeah. that's, that's, where you, that's where your defense is getting their keys, and a lot of them. That's correct. And Coach Torres over the years has done a great job of getting his linemen to be able to show that run punch mm -hmm. and first step mm -hmm. hard and, and then be able to pass pro. But um, we're a little inexperienced this year in the line. And, uh, Look at that, though. Now that... I guess we got a flag for something. They there. got us know. for a face mask right there. Uh, and Or grabbing the helmet, I guess is what it was. Probably it really wasn't a helmet. It yeah. wasn't a face mask. I guess they call it grabbing the helmet there. But anyway, uh, Cody Michael just made a good play a second ago on breaking up a pass. And uh, just a little bit of. Uh, uh, we had some people here in the studios commentating on uh, yeah. the takedown on the backside of that last play, and uh, it was a true takedown. They run a little trail route, and we got two players covering deep, nobody taking the trail guy, and so they end up uh, picking up good yardage. Good play by Shelbyville. Matt almost Carter got him. Almost, almost gets got him. him, and Dalton Cox and Cody Michael and company do get it, Mr. Morton. And hold him to a one-yard gain. They put their twins into the boundary this time. And uh, trying to hit Morton over here by himself. You know, on a little slant route, but Van Williams is in good position. And they try to throw a screen here to the wide receiver. And, you know, we got people chasing, and that's good. 
Um, that's a big play. Big play. Big play. Took them out of a fourth down where they would go for it on fourth down to where they're going to punt it now. Maybe. This is the place right here where I thought he's not going to punt that ball, but he did. Uh, we got confused on which direction we were going in. And anyway, we ended up bad field position there. That ball looked like it was laying on, a, on the goal line. On the goal line, yeah. I've not figured that one out. That, that, that ball should have come out to the 20. Yeah. Maybe. That's what I would have thought. We're in a tough spot right here. We are. We're going to try to throw it deep. And... Uh, Justin tries to hit, I think Chris Potts coming across the middle, if I remember right there, and uh, weren't able to do it. So now we're going to try to run it out of there, and we miss a block on number 50. And so now we're at third down and 10, and we're still at the one-yard line. So we're going to quick kick it. And Hayden Hines, I told him I've only done this about three times in 20 years, uh, that – He's been practicing it, you know. That's a good. For, that was a good call, coach. Several, you know, for a while. And anyway, I wasn't sure we'd ever use it, but lo and behold, we did. And he came in and he executed exactly what he needed to do. Is he got about a 46-yard punt? Yeah, that was a very, very good call right there. Matt Carter. That's a great That's job. Second him. You know, there was a there was a fellow sitting behind me last night that I didn't know. He was from Kentucky. He was with the Robinsons, and he said, you know, these kids really know how to tackle. He said, you watch a lot of these games, and they, everybody's going for the big hit, and they come and make a big hit, but the running back just bounces off and keeps on going. And and I'm impressed as well as how our young men. They get there, but not, not only get there, they hold on. Um, you know, it, it, they might get drugged a little bit, but they're holding on. They're not just, uh, I know they're, they're doing better. This week, we worked really hard in the secondary from the standpoint of, of staying on our feet because we knew how athletic they are. Right. And we wanted to stay on our feet and grab them and hang on. Didn't need to be a pitcher perfect tackle. It needed to be hang on, stay on, for help. <laughs> stay on your feet. Don't let them juke you off and 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 get a big play against you. They do get a big play right there. Their quarterback makes a really good play. Ward pulled that thing down and ran with it, and that was a good job by Ward. Uh, there, Trey Burks runs Morton out of bounds, but he picks up seven or eight yards on the play. Uh, they come back and run Morton right up the gut, and that's good hard run by him. And defensively there, uh, they got us a little bit on our heels right now. And uh, good play right here by a young sophomore, Chris Pott. Howard there does a great job. He was in great position. Uh, the ball went right right through his hands, I mm -hmm. think, and it also went through that receiver's hands, but uh, he he was in great position. He went high for the football. So we're just battling right here because it's right, you know, this clock is counting down. They run a kind of a draw play type looking play. It's, Pretty good play for them. They pick up good yardage. Got their five back. Got it back. Got a little bit more than five back. Now they want to kind of gash us again and get a first mm -hmm. down. <clears throat> there it is. Same play they just ran. And again, they pick up good yardage. And uh, Morton gets it down to the 11. This time, Ward keeps it and uh, does a good job. Gets down to the six or so. Let's go, 
And we're backed up. We are. And uh, it's, you know, Morton makes a great effort there, but uh, we're able to tackle him. Short of the goal line, but he got a first down. First so it's down. first and goal at the one, so the clock stops and everything. And it is bow up time. Big play right here. Hit Castleman in the backfield. Zane Price, I think, was the first one to get to him. Yep. And Aaron Gray and Joe London. And now we've knocked them back to the three. Four yard line. And uh, second and. You know, clock's down inside, I don't know, 19 seconds, something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, it's, it may be even lower than that, maybe 11 seconds. They're going to try to hit Morton here on a rollout and uh, couldn't pitch and catch. Trey was in pretty good position. Don't know if we could have kept it from being a touchdown or not if he had called it. <clears throat> this is like a professional basketball game. This last 11 seconds lasted about 15 minutes. That yeah, seems like <laughs> it. As, uh, come back and they're going to try to throw the ball to Morton again. And... Uh, and I don't know exactly how he hurt his shoulder there, but he did. Yeah, so that'll be the last play. And uh, I think the football actually hit Brandon Coke right in, right in the helmet. And uh, and he actually didn't have the coverage there. He was on his man. But because two of them being over there together, uh, as Morton's reaching for the football, it looked like last night from the sideline that it hit Brandon right in the helmet. And, uh, and therefore... It keeps it from going on into Morgan's right, hands. Right, there. right. So uh, you know, here we are, folks. It's seven to nothing, Tullahoma. And and as we said, you watch this defense. I mean, they're right there, first and goal from the one yard line, and and you know they pull it off. And it's just it's determination. It's good coaching. It's good kids. And uh, we're just proud right now to be where we are because. You know, with a guy like Morton at any minute, it's that right there, and it's seven points. I mean, they're, they're on the board. And if Morton was the only one, you know, you can defend that a little easier yeah. than knowing that they can get the ball out to three or four other right. players. Right, yeah, there are a lot of athletes zip in that right game. through you and so forth. So, anyway, uh, I thought it was huge because it kept them from getting momentum, uh, even though the score would have probably just been tied at halftime. Right, right. They would have had momentum on their side, right. and instead they don't have momentum on their side. Uh, we've got the momentum, right? And stopped uh, them, and that's that was big. That was big, huge. Big it series was huge. right there. Uh, the Telehome High School band was not there last night, but we do have a feature presentation from them. Uh, thanks to our good friend and our our filmographer, Mr. Bob Lamoyer. And he, uh, he just happened to have another one of their programs in the truck last night, and we're going to bring that to you for a halftime show. I believe it was Tyner. It's Tyner. The program put on at Tyner. And uh, we'll be right back after halftime and a few messages from our sponsors. Hi, Trim McNabb, General Manager, Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. We're doing our part to raise awareness for breast cancer, and for every vehicle sold in the month of October, we will donate $50 to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. And we're making it easier than ever to purchase your vehicle at Stan McNabb with our pink tag clearance event. Like on this 2012 Chevy Sonic, just $239 a month with zero down. Or this 2012 Chevy Cruze, just $289 a month with zero down. Come in today for the pink tag clearance event, and remember, If anyone can, Stan can! Serving you as a local firefighter. Proudly served our country in the United States Air Force. Serving Tullahoma. Helping our kids. Hi, I'm Terry Stroop. Your comfort is our service. We'd like to thank Tullahoma for the privilege of serving your heating and cooling needs. To be a star athlete, you have to use the right equipment. Anything short of that is, well, ineffective. Make Top Rehab the best tool in your bag. 
especially after you've had a sports-related injury. Yes, you may get tired. Yes, you may get uncomfortable. But when the final rehab whistle blows, you get results. Top Rehab, the right equipment for your star athletes. Welcome to the Rose Bowl. The team's taking the field. Not many people. Oh, my. He missed. Uh, off to a rough start here. Somebody wants to go home. What's he doing? If you're not watching college football in HD, you're watching Pee Wee TV. Graduate to Charter TV in HD and let it all in.
Since 1889, Traders Bank has been helping our neighbors realize their dreams. Whether our customers are looking to put a roof over their heads, try their hand at entrepreneurship, or see themselves behind the wheel of a shiny new car, the folks at Traders Bank have always been ready to dive in with them. Because at Traders, we lend you more than just money. We lend you our good name. Traders Bank, you're welcome. Hello, I'm Jim Woodard from Woodard's Diamond Showroom. Some think that since we're a single store operation, we don't have the buying power of the mega chain or department stores. Woodard's is a part of the Master IJO Jewelers, the world's largest jewelry buying group. This gives us the power of 800 million in sales. You get the best of both worlds, the buying power of a major with the customer service of a hometown jeweler. Woodard's Diamond Showroom, inside Northgate Mall of Tallahoma. Are your teeth dull, chipped, stained, or crooked? If so, call the dental practice of Dr. Mike Long. For a wider, brighter, more attractive smile, Dr. Long offers cosmetic dentistry at its best through whitening, bonding, and veneers. Dr. Long also uses laser technology, eliminating anesthesia and drilling. When you are ready to enhance your smile, call Dr. Mike Long, family practice dentistry for 29 years. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. Open up the second half here, Shelby Bill. Ops to receive as it was their choice. We defend the scoreboard, and the young man almost gets out and around us, but Zane Price is right where he's supposed to be. And knocks him out of bounds at the 28-yard line. There's your trap play. and. We can't get off the blocker there, and they pick up really good yardage for before Matt Carter, Zane Price brings him down. But if you look at that trap play, there's number eight running it instead of number 23. Right. Uh, Morton won't play any in this half. And uh, good job there by Joe London. I don't know how many sacks Joe's gotten here over the last couple of weeks, but he's gotten a bunch. And uh, good defense there. We got him in a third and really, really long situation. Good pressure by Joe London and Zane Price is going to make the interception there as he and Trey had the receiver. And uh, we've got a great return. Should have had great field position, but we've got a mistake blocking wise, and so it backs us up. Then we get five more. Yep. Let's make it hard on ourselves. And uh, we're just, you know, we don't open up this half very good at all. Though. We lose the handle there on the snap. Uh, if I remember right, it was a little bit to the left. and So we're just struggling here a little bit, trying to get going again. And Justin Brown, good read. And uh, picks all the yardage that we've lost back up, and we're faced with a third and ten. And uh, not sure what we called. I've not talked to Justin yet, but we didn't run what we <laughs> thought we were going to run. I'll put it that way. And, and you know, he almost had he almost had Caleb back to the ball if he could have picked it up. You know, gotten it about another two yards downfield, we'd had yeah. a reception there. Yeah. So anyway, that happens sometimes when you wig wag. Uh, things get misdirected. We miss him right miss there. It, we miss should have it, had him. Miss him. That's three, uh, four. But they've blocked us in the back over there on the far side, so it's all going to be for naught and. Shamar Smith and Dalton Cox is right where he's supposed to be. And so we do at least get him tackled without them taking a deep one. And uh, they're backed up because of their penalty, though. 
Trevor Denny there on the stop. Coach, have we made Trevor mad? He used to come visit us on Saturday mornings. I don't know. I think we poked too much fun at him that one time. He hadn't been back. Uh, Shelbyville does a good job of running the play back over here to the left here. There's a couple of different types of blocking schemes they're using there. Sometimes they're pulling linemen, sometimes it's a lineman and a back, but uh, they're doing a good job of making good yardage over here. And they pick up a big first down. They try a little quick spot pass and Van Williams and Aaron Gray right where they need to be. And they pick up a yard or two, but not much. You know, number 23 is not there, but they have a team full of athletes. Uh, they do, I'm telling you. We watched number two video on them, number two, number four, number, number eight. six, number eight. They all have made big yeah. plays throughout the year. Uh, good job right here by Shelbyville. Uh, running back held our linebacker, and they had a one-on-one -on -one out route over here on the sideline, and they executed really well. Mm. Uh, come back, still trying to hammer this same side over here, same type play. Jacob Pearson had a hold of him in the backfield, just couldn't hang on. Couldn't hang on there. And... Trevor Denny there, got his legs wrapped up. Third down and about two. And they run a little speed option there. and. Uh, it's going to be short again. So now we got them in a fourth and one. Almost drew us offside, and then they try a little trick play here, and Dalton Cox. There you go. And then Zane Price finishes him off. Dalton ends the play, though, and we have stopped him on fourth down. Big play. Big play by the defense right there. And Jonathan Stovall runs it up the middle for four, five yards. Glad to see him back healthy. He's a, he's a fine young man. He is. He's an outstanding young man. He's a good football player. He understands the game, doesn't he? He does. And uh, he's a real quiet young man. But uh, he he's going to be a really, really good one. Come out here on a third and two and hit Zane Price in the flats. And we're able to pick up first down. Mr. Automatic. We're going to come back and we're running an isolation play here. And good cut by Trey. And good hard running. And right there is the only thing that I wish Dakota hadn't done. If he had just gotten up and said, okay, you know, I'll be back to see you on the next play. Uh, but he had to get that little shove in there or we'd have had 15 yards against Shelbyville added on to that last play. Tried to go for the touchdown there with Zane. Uh, we had a little hitch and go on and uh, had him right there, had a window, but we couldn't get it in. And then disaster strikes us. And... We just need to go back forward right there. Trey keeps trying to make a play, and we're going to end up all the way back out to the 44-yard line, and that's just tough now. We're going to come back, and Trey will get 13 or 14 of it back right here. And um, leaves us with a fourth down and about 20 at the 30-yard line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, too close to punt, too far to try to kick a field goal on that kind of field on that kind of a night. So we'll go for it here to open up the fourth quarter. And what's the score right now, Coach? It is still 7-0. Seven, 7-0, zero. Seven zero, three quarters into this ball game. And it's been an exciting ball game. And as we told you in the beginning, the defensive play in this ball game's been phenomenal. It's just been phenomenal. And, and you know, everybody's had a crack and nobody, the egg's not broken open yet, but it's getting ready to happen. Yeah. And uh, so you stay tuned. Hey, we want to say something before we go. I want to talk about this fine quartz water right here. And uh, 
Rick Gerwey and his family over at Mid-South Distributing. You need to hydrate. That's where you need to get your hydration right there, folks, from the queue. That's White Quartz Water. That's Mid-South Distributing, our water sponsor for the John Ollie Fifth Quarter Show. We appreciate them. Thank them very much. There's where you get it the Q. And we also want to thank Mayo and his family over at the Donut Palace for all the great donuts they bring us over here. We go and get them every, every Saturday morning for football. And thank you, Mayo. Oh, me, oh, Mayo. Where are you going to go, oh? To the Donut Palace right across from Tallahoma High School. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after these messages. They say you see the world differently. It's like you see the miracle of life in even the smallest things. That's what it feels like to survive. St. Thomas Heart has more locations than anyone in the state, giving more heart patients a new lease on life. For more than 40 years, they've been leaders in cardiac care. That's experience you can count on. Do you need a part for your car that the dealer just wants too much money for? Well, bring your toolbox and pull the part yourself for huge savings at the CFC Auto Salvage Pick and Pull on Highway 55 between Tullahoma and Manchester. No walking through waist-high weeds here. All of our vehicles are located in our graveled parking lot, up on blocks with room to work. We stock hundreds of cars and trucks, foreign and domestic, new and old, with new vehicles added weekly. You can even search our entire vehicle inventory online. And if your old vehicle gives up the ghost, bring it by. We offer top dollar for your salvage vehicle open to the public seven days a week until 6 30 or until dark so there's plenty of time to come by that's cfc auto salvage pick and pull the Wash Spot on North Jackson Street in Tullahoma is your new state-of-the-art high-tech express tunnel car wash that gets your car clean quickly and beautifully. We have four washes available from the $6 Express Wash to the $12 Supreme Clean featuring DuraShield Total Car Protectant. Just pick your wash and let the express tunnel wash leave the dirt behind. After the wash, you can help yourself to one of the free vacuums. Come by seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to get the best wash in town at a great price. We're located at 2180 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma. The Wash Spot, locally owned and operated. Life moves fast, but on the internet, it moves at super speed. Like the awesome video that was posted last night. Today it'll be shared, then adored, then parodied, <laughs> then overexposed. And by tomorrow morning, rediscovered by a whole new generation of users. Download faster, upload faster, stream faster, and experience life at the speed of Internet with high-speed charter Internet. We open up fourth quarter and uh, don't have many plays for a fourth and 20. So uh, biggest thing was we sent four receivers deep and Justin was just trying to give one of them a chance. Um, so anyway, Shelbyville takes over there at the 30-yard line, and um, Big Pearson, you know, running back loses his feet there, and I think they come back and try to run a screen here to 24, and he goes, he loses his footing again, his knee hit the ground right there, so he's down, and um, so we got him in a third and long now. And quarterback trying to step up, pretty good job at closing his gaps up and pretty good coverage all around there. And so fourth down and long, and they got to punt it. Uh, we're going to get a running into the kicker call against us right here. And so anyway, uh, it's 23. Morton was their punter, so they got their backup punter in and. Um, that ended up being, what, a five-yard penalty? Five-yard penalty. They get to repunt it, and we do a better job that time of making sure we stayed to the side of him and just tried to put our hands out on the ball. No, 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 no. Cover four, cover. And so we take over in good field position, and Justin Brown going to carry the football there good on our style option. And... Um, Jonathan Stovall is going to carry the football right here, and 
bounced it outside and had some good blocks out there by the receivers on that side and picks up good yardage. <clears throat> we try a little trickery here. Uh, we did a direct snap to our tailback and it was Justin Brown carrying out the fake and mm -hmm. we were kind of unbalanced and uh, we had to run into the back of our own lineman there. We might have ripped him for a little bit more, but we got positive yards, and that's good. Good job there by Justin Brown. Great job. Uh, stepping inside and keeping the ball up through there. And this time we're going to try to trap this backside in. We've been doing everything toward the motion, and this time we're going to go back where he just came from, and Justin just loses his footing, or I believe he scores right there. And uh, then we're on Tim Tebow here. Uh, we just have them spread all over the place and <laughs> run a 200-pound quarterback straight ahead. Yeah. And he does and a good job. And, and it works. Yeah, I was after the game walking on that field. That field was mushy. So we're at 14, Coach. We're finally at 14, and that was a relief. A uh, relief, that means we're for not, sure. You know, because when we kick off right here, you don't know if they don't take it all the way to the house or not. And Cody gets it into the end zone. That was big. He dropped his trajectory there about in the in the second half and started putting that ball deeper. They try to run a little quick hitch, and we're right there. Uh, just we got him boxed in. We just need to make the tackle a little bit quicker. Uh, they were. Had a receiver that got covered up, and he went downfield. So anyway, five-yard penalty. They come right back to the play, and this time we do a better job of tackling, and so they pick up three yards on the play. And uh, I don't know exactly what they thought they were seeing over there, but they felt like they were seeing they were something. Seeing, yeah. and, uh, and they come back to a very similar play, if not the same play. Good swim move there by Joe London. And uh, had their tailback going down the yeah. seam. That was something we worked on. They scored on us last year with that play. Uh, we were trying to play it, but uh, he still uh, was running past us there. Joe London picks up another sack. And now we take over with great field position and and just feel like we need to get a knockout on them right here. We're going to hand the ball off to Marcella Scott. And then we're going to come right back off this play and throw a play action pass. And Riley Darden is going to be open there in the end zone. Good throw, good recognition by Justin. And uh, so we get a touchdown to Riley Darden. And, uh, Riley's caught about three of those like that this year. We I just, think. Uh, you know, we got some really good young wide receivers that are playing a lot for us this year and ought to provide a lot of excitement for us uh, over the coming years. So now, Coach, we're 21 to nothing, and I know you're you're breathing a sigh of relief. A sigh of relief. That. Yeah. Once we got up 21-0. You know, now all we want to do is grind clock. If we get our hands back on the ball, let's let's work clock and make sure they don't get out of bounds. Um, but if you watch Shelbyville here, you know they're not giving up. They're not going to lay down and just let the ball game finish out. Uh, they don't make plays, and they do a good job and have really a, a very good drive right they here. They don't fake Mr. Lemoy out very much, but they got him right there. They got him right there. He was struggling for space up there in the press box. <laughs> they had her filled to the gills. <clears throat> so anyway, we're, you know, playing sometimes a three-man front, sometimes a four-man front. And uh, we keep losing contain on that gentleman. Good, good job there by Brandon Coke. That's good tight coverage. And they keep hurting us. Number eight, so right into our right, and you know. 
you want to keep them on the ground, but if you let them run too much, the first down stops the clock. Uh, they're just they're making good. You know, this is a good drive by them. Uh, they could have, after not getting it on fourth down there, previous series and enough scoring to go up 21-0, uh, they could have thrown the towel in, but they're not. They're responding back. and Ooh, I'm glad we didn't get a penalty right there. I think the referee decided we were stumbling, that it wasn't that he came on in there on purpose. I think the ref there just ruled that Cody had lost his, lost his balance, balance and, and nothing he could do. Yeah. Good job Great by Zane Price job, Zane. there. And they're going to try a similar looking pass to the other side, and this time you don't see a white jersey come out of there with it. And Mr. Riley Darden, I don't know exactly how long it is. He was in the end zone. But um, I think it's the longest interception return during my 20 years here. Can't remember one any longer than that one right there. And so within a couple of minutes, Riley's caught a touchdown pass and then intercepted a pass and run it over 100 yards for a touchdown. Quite a quarter for a young sophomore. Uh, for a that one. For a long, long yeah, time. His now. whole his whole past his career. Yes. All the way till he's old as we are. That kind of stuff doesn't disappear. Chris Potts there on the tackle. And now, you know, we just want to finish the game out. Just ride it out. And we're trying to play other players and um trying to get as many on the field as we can at this point in time. And I think it's coming up here in just a second. John Floyd's on a get a fumble recovery as he and Chris House there on the tackle, Aaron Gray, and I didn't pick up the fourth one there. Uh, here's the fumble, and, you know, Jonathan, he'll be getting – Little ribbon on Monday about him taking a knee there after <laughs> scooping up the fumble, but uh, good job by Jonathan Floyd, a senior who uh, missed last season and has come back and been a very valuable part to us uh, offensively and defensively and special teams this year. Jake Crabtree there. Uh, I think we missed the handoff, but he at least knew which way to run. He knew what to do, didn't he? He did. And uh, he and Hunter Myers alternating at quarterback now. Two sophomore quarterbacks. And That's your future, isn't it? Marcella Scott there running the football these last few times. Glad to see Marcellus back well. He had a, he had a little injury problem early, didn't he? He did, yes. He had a knee injury. Uh, good job there. We missed the handoff again, but Jake goes and grabs it, and that's the last play of the game. And tell them the Wildcats have secured second place in our district uh, with the win as we own the tiebreaker with uh, Franklin County, and then Franklin County got beat last night anyway. So uh, that that's it. Sold it up. That's Where it, pretty it's, much. It's, it's so. ours now. So um, that was. That was good. It was great. It was great. And, uh, you know, we uh, were looking at second place in, the, in, the, in our district, which, uh, of course, has, it, has its advantages. We possibly will have a home game. It there. gets you into the playoffs automatically, and I think it will give us an automatic home game. I think they've changed. They, every year we've tweaked this system right, and we've right. tweaked it so many times now I just wait till we get to it comes back around to the that, tweak that we had three four yeah, years ago it's back so there anyway I think uh, first and second place teams in each district get to host first round um, where we end up in the seating process I, yeah, we'll, you know, we won't know until the Saturday that it's released right. there uh, but uh, I congratulate our young men. Uh, they did well. They have beaten their fourth neighborhood rivalry type game. Right. And um, and that's hard to do. It, it, it is. I, I'm proud of them for being able to do that. Um, you know, this is a, 
uh, a team that we've talked about had the black cloud falling, and, and it wasn't an easy week this week. Uh, we lost another lineman with a broken thumb, and we thought we had another one break his hand that, you know, had to be padded up big time last right, night right. to just play through it. And uh, Coach Britton had family emergency as his daughter got hospitalized, and we missed him for a day there at practice. Mm -hmm. And. You know, it's just nothing real smooth. And, and plus, you're you're out of school. We're out of school, and which changes the whole dynamic of these kids' lives as to when they get up and right. when they go to bed, and you know the whole thing. And we try to bring them in each morning. This past week, now this coming week, we won't do that. We want them to get a little bit of a break. Right. But this ball game was big. We knew it was big. We knew what it meant for us, and. Um, Mission so accomplished. They came in at nine o'clock in the morning, stayed to about ten forty five right. or eleven, right. go eat lunch, come back and practice in the afternoon. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go to our players of the game and uh I'm really proud of this young man personally because I think uh up until about five or six weeks before football season started, he hadn't thrown a football since he was playing in Mullins League. He has had to come and learn the system, learn to make decisions on his feet, and uh, and has played for the past two weeks, has played two really good football games, and that's our quarterback, Justin Brown. Uh, Justin's the offensive player of the week this week, and uh, we appreciate him for taking that challenge, you know, right. because he was, he was in a position that he was familiar with and, and played well and walked away from that and came and took this challenge on you know strapped strapped one on for the team and you know uh you've accomplished it son he's done well and um you know his demeanor has served him well yeah. he's able to forget about a bad play and just go make the next snap. go make the next one. And, and that's what has helped him out more than anything else uh ran the ball good last night made some clutch cat throws and so forth. So, well, when you uh, go out there and you you're, you busted a play, and all of a sudden you up in the air and, and you know like you're shooting a basketball, throwing a jump pass to to Zane Price and and uh, who stayed who it seemed like to me Zane just hung in the air. <laughs> he was off the ground. I don't know for how long, waiting on that ball. I mean, it was like it was like against gravity to make that catch. And uh, but Justin, you've done a good job, son. And our defensive player of the week this week is is had a really good ball game last night. He he has good ball games every week on both sides of the ball. He's one of those he's one of those seniors that uh, is the core part of the heart and soul of this group. Small, hard, you know, goes up after the ball goes after the 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 running back goes uh, plays his positions extremely well and uh mr automatic as yeah, zane price and made zane some big plays on defense plays at on crucial defense. times he uh, i don't know how many tackles he had last night but he had the big interception in return and then uh you know on the fourth down stop that dalton hit the man first and he's spinning right. out of dalton and zane finishes him off so he can't get the first down there in the third quarter and yeah. i thought it was a huge play yeah and he's there. There's another fine young man right there. Yes, great, great young man and a great leader. And here we go. This is our unsung hero this week. And who else could you give it to? The guy catches a touchdown pass, and within three or four plays, he intercepts one and runs it over a hundred yards for a, another touchdown, back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to Riley Darden, number three. Number three. Riley did really well and had a quarter to remember for his whole life. Yeah, you got it. You got it. And uh, we in the stands remember will remember this game because it was it was a game, very important game this this year. And again, the Wildcat football team. You know, folks, if you don't if you don't go out and watch this, you need to because it is exciting. These young men will bring you, will entertain you, and make you cheer. And uh, you'll support them. Uh, come out and see see these boys play ball. Next week we are going to McMinnville. We go to McMinnville and play Warren County, 
and um, non-district game, uh, but from a seeding standpoint in the playoffs, we need to win. It becomes a important game to us as far as trying to improve our seeding, and um, and you know, and uh, we kind of talked uh, about it last year when we were kind of in this situ- same situation. Uh, you know, you, you paid to go to work, and we don't pay them, but same principle take your lunch bucket and let's go to work yep. because that's what's expected right not because the boss is there watching or not watching this is just what's expected out right. of you and that you got to take your lunch pail and go to work and um, for these next two ball games um, that's what it's all about it's about just go to work let's get the job done well and, and, and Lawrence County was off last night they were and Lawrence County uh, I don't know whether they've woken up whether some of the teams they've been playing had bad ball games but all of a sudden Lawrence County's chipping their way into being a good football team they're beating people and they may you know by the time they get to us they may have a playoff possibility riding on the line right uh, don't know uh, but anyway, they they're coming off a big win against Franklin. Always and, tough. And um, you know they uh, it'll be a tough ball game. Yeah, it always have, is. With have them. a good coaching staff, good yeah. fan base, yep. and a bunch of young bunch of good kids. So two more to go, folks. We're five and three. Five and three. And that's a good place to be right now. Looking at it from the start of the whole deal at McGavick or against McGavick to where we are right now, surprised, elated, and very, very happy to be right here. That's correct. All right. For Coach John Olive, this is John Gray signing off. Until next time, we appreciate you. Go watch a Wildcat football game. It sure is fun. See you next time.